Hello, my name is Lizzie, and welcome to the May brush of the month tutorial. And uh, for this, we are going to draw a bird. And um, I already made a little sketch. This is my sketch. This is what I plan to do. It's very rough. I just uh, played with colors and textures to see if I'm drawing it live, then it will good, look good and uh, how I actually want to draw it. So I will put this sketch on a different um, canvas. It's very early for me. You just go and uh, insert for clipboard. I'm using a really huge canvas, 6,000 by 7,500, but feel free to use as big of a canvas as you can. My canvases are always very large, just in case I want to um, sell it or um, put it up on my website or put it uh, up for printing so my canvases are always large and uh, keep in mind that the the brush that I'm showing you is uh, also for this kind of uh, canvas we are going to use starshine from the magical storybook toolbox and uh, it will look much bigger on a smaller canvas so you will have to make the size uh, go down a bit to make it proportionate and um, yes this is a really important part and if you find that it's too small for you then in properties you can increase increase the maximum size as well so you don't have to do anything else just this so now that we did this I am going to upload this sketch uh, with the brushes as well. This time it won't be a stamp out. Um, you know what? Let's make it into a stamp out. Because why not? I have the wheel here. So to make a stamp brush, we are learning that now. <laughs> to make a stamp brush, we have to make this into a square. Let's see if it cuts off. It does not cut off. Nice. So we are going to share as a JPEG. Wonderful. And then we are going to replace this whale. Edit, import, import a photo. Here's our bird. It's a sketchy bird. It's gonna be a sketchy stamp bird create new reset point so when you reset then you will get the same bird and then done and now you can stamp out the bird for yourself on your own canvas so that should be easier for you but I actually wanted to no no I wanted to redraw it but I think he looks she looks they look i actually didn't decide on the gender <laughs> they look cute so first i want to make a background layer no i'm sorry it's really early for me let's decide on colors first because um this is the kind of color i wanted to do in the beginning and um I wanted this to be the bird itself and um, for this color I matched this pink to be the glasses and I was thinking to be this to be the the feather details and I need something that could be a nice background for our bird that doesn't clash with these colors but it's uh, I'm using the vibrantophile colors right now to get inspiration from it I want to make this really 
cheerful. So, and I'm trying to not go my usual route of, oh, well, we just make this as a background. We're actually going to make that as a background. If you see, these colors are not clashing with each other, so it would be a good background. I am going to show you how to make the background now, but I'm going to speed this part up because it takes a long time. <laughs> and uh, while it's nice to uh, do it by hand, or not do it by hand, but like, it, it's, it's a nice thing to have this done just like this. It can be really, really time consuming. But uh, if you rather not go all textured, then uh, you can just, you know, fill the layer with the color and you don't have to worry about uh, having to do all this scribbling uh, as a background. And uh, this is actually a really nice way to show you that how I am actually going to color the bird as well because when I draw in this style that you are going to see and you are probably seeing it now on the thumbnail I don't actually worry too much about being super precise this is the only style that I don't worry about being super precise with I am scribbling like a crazy mad woman and uh, it's um it's quite freeing actually so if you have some frustrations this is the time to do it and since i'm talking so much and this is going so 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 fast i might well not actually speed this up ah oh, i am so sorry guys i am my brain is like fried and uh, I haven't had coffee yet, but I had to act very quickly because I am staying at my family and it's like really small slots when I can film for you and I have to get ready by then. Like if I'm not ready then, then it will never happen. So yes, that's my big excuse. So that, yeah, please, please. Please don't hate me for being so scattered in the brain. But yes, this is the idea of how we are going to uh, shade this bird as well. And uh, I want you to feel how free you are with this pencil. Because we are going to make like kind of a children's book illustration. So I expect this bird to be a character in a children's book and for that I want to make it a very cute illustration since it's from the magical storybook toolbox, toolbox it's um it's cute when it looks a little bit of scribbly and nice but also this brush if you uh, make your pencil lie down like very much on the side then it makes a texture as well so um you can try that too but i am all for this scribbling quickly and just laying down a texture like this on the background and enjoying that it doesn't look perfect and i would also call this kind of a joy experience or something that you can do for uh, fun too like you don't have to be a children's book illustrator to enjoy this or do this you can just do this for um, letting some uh, pressure go because I think it's really fun and it's a great way to uh, get your hand used to drawing. Like this morning, I haven't drawn anything yet. So it's a great way to get used to your pencil as well. And uh, about 
this scribbling is that uh, the only the real really the only thing to pay attention to is that to not make long lines and small small lines next to next to each other because then it looks a bit weird so try to keep the lines the same length and then uh, it will look quite textured and the texture will look um, all um, even even if it's not even it will look even because the lines are the same length so that's the only thing to pay attention to here that you do the same movement movement all all over again but uh, just the same length of lines as well and then we are almost done wow I either talked a lot or it didn't take as much as I thought it would. I'm a professional, I swear. I'm a professional, guys. I swear. Okay, so we are finishing up. Aww, that's a cute background. I like it. I'm gonna make a new layer. And uh, I picked this color to be the base, but now I'm thinking that this would be better for highlight. So she he could have like this color rather. And this one I want it above my sketch. And I'm also going to make this sketch layer a bit less opaque and now we are going to do a bit more precise but still scribbly lines we are going to put down the base color for this bird i will probably keep the legs and eye and the mm, beak black but I deserve the right to change my mind. If you see pattern repeating when you are doing this for a long time next to each other, like, like this, then you lift your pencil and then do it a different way and then you will not see it anymore. Unfortunately, with um, these kind of pencil brushes, it's an, an inevitable to have... Um, pattern repeat repetition but also it gives a nice texture when you uh, lift your brush or pen and uh, do it from a different direction than uh, it should be and then um, it will go away this is a really relaxing drawing it's very different from my usual drawing style of being all accurate and uh, being on top of things all the time. So this is a really nice illustration to do. I love doing this. <laughs> I didn't, didn't expect that I would love doing this. I didn't uh, draw out the entire bird as a... Uh, a tryout I just uh, did the sketch and uh, I did a, a small part of its uh, chest to check colors but yeah this is super relaxing
we are not going for perfection. This is something I keep telling my patrons as well. So my patrons know it already that we are not going for perfection. We are illustrators, which means that we are going for a, a look that is charming, cute, and it depicts our own image or how we see the world. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. The world is not perfect. So why would our illustrations be? You don't have to use the same color as I do, by the way. You are free to pick whatever you would like. I'm only using this color because I am a huge fan of these orangey, yellowy colors and pink. So I just have to use this for my own happiness. <laughs> We are learning the technique to draw with a pencil anyways, so uh, for me the color really just has to be something that I really like and uh, color is one thing that even though I don't feel like I have an illustration style, I do have an illustration style and it's mostly depicted by color and these are definitely my colors. I think it's cute, I think it's good, I think it's awesome. We are going to make a lot of layers now, well more than I usually do. I am going to put the line work, first I'm checking if it's good, it's good. I'm going to put the line work above again because I'm going to draw the feet. First I will try with dark brown and um, then decide if I like it dark brown or if it just should be black. Black sounds really harsh, but uh, I use black a lot in my work, uh, together with the pink that you see in the background. And um, it just, I think it looks together I will also show you how to change the color if it's not working out with brown this is one of the good things about the digital illustration you can change the color whenever you want I hit the layer and now I'm checking uh, if I like the shapes and forms and uh, if it looks too doodly there's nothing nothing wrong with too doodly but just want a bit of perfection please I'm allowed a bit of perfection right now we are going to go to hue and uh, see if it looks better with black so far I I don't think it's better with black so I'm going to keep this brown and uh, turn up or turn on the layer on which I have my line art and um, go to this really dark version of this uh, color that I have and we are going to start shading now what I'm going to do is lower the opacity of this put this layer above this 
and uh, with very light strokes I'm going to try and shade it a bit under the wings since that would be shadow here and here at the feathers as well since this part would be in the shadow I'm using my pencil very light on, on this right now. the size a bit for some accuracy I'm doing a very soft line art on the edges. It uh, is not um, a strong line art. I only do it on certain areas to accentuate the edges. Very light brush strokes, very, very light brush strokes. Cute. I think he looks cute. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just really charmed by some characters that I draw. I'm going to go shade lighter and lots of saturation turn on my line art that I can't even find anymore and um, do some details these details are like doodle details so you don't have to overthink it it's literally just there so you would have a little bit of variation in the feathers of it and give a bit of idea that it's a bird bird so make u shapes kind of u shapes 
elongated U shapes, or you can even go V shapes uh, to show that it's a bird and it has tiny, tiny feathers. I want to do this right away because I want to turn off the line art since the line art is not really adding much to this story here I just uh, have it as a guidance but this is the actual illustration that I have to work on On birds' heads, if you look at a bird, they have smaller um, feathers. <laughs> wow, that hard bird. And um, so I'm only doing little lines to show that they do have feathers, but not very big ones. Okay, and now we go bonkers because now we have the shape and now we have the shadowing and now we have the line art basically done on our bird so now we add lots of colors well not lots of colors but we are going to add uh, variations of the base color of the bird you can go and pick up this color and then pull it to the left and up to have some highlight color. I know it doesn't look like much right now this color on it but we are going to go even lighter now these lines that I made here why does this always happen does it happen to you as well just clear up the random lines always make sure that you clear up the random random lines that you make <laughs> oh I think the bird itself is done there are important parts though full white and we go and draw on top of that layer eyes eye highlights and I want my bird to be a bit judgy so I will make the beak like hmm I'm judging you and I am going to turn on my 
layer again and I know that I used the color from Vibrant of File to make um, the glasses so I'm going to do that As you can see this is not the color that I picked in the beginning but we are going to fix that after I drew this yes I'm I'm a firm believer of hue saturation and brightness <laughs> Yes, it needs to be more saturated. Darker. I'm going to include the color palette with this. I'm gonna pick the colors properly from this image because uh, I know that it's really hard for you to follow like this. That I am being an artist here and just... Do you know what I'm thinking? Thinking is would be cool. Now I'm having wild ideas on the on the way. I am thinking that it would be kind of cute if the glasses would have this flower pattern on it. Have you seen these kind of glasses? It's usually put on kids, but I don't know. It's really cute. I think my uh, cousin had one of these when she was a kid. It's too thick. See, this is one what an artist does. <laughs> and this is the freedom of digital art you can just undo it also I want to um, put an extra line here to show that this is different from the glasses I did the line wrongly there with the glasses color so I'm going to erase that too we always erase with the same brush that we draw with or I am at least because I want to keep the texture. The judgy eyebrow. He has to have the judgy eyebrow. It's not very judgy, it's more like, hi, I'm a burb, I'm a cute little burb. So, if you're not happy with the colors, you can um, put everything in a group. I will hide this group. And I will flatten this. And... I can go hue, saturation, brightness on the entire thing and I think I want more saturated actually. Just so it pops more. And then um, what else I really want is maybe some shadows but I'm undecided on that yet. the shadows I'm 
with a bit of fixage with the glasses since I changed the hue saturation brightness. No. The glasses are good. And there's only one more thing that you have to do and you have to do it every single time you do an artwork no matter if it's just for practice you always have to stamp your name on it always always protect your artwork and we are done I am going to show an extra tip for you. Um, I am using um, the 1998 camera as a um, oh, this is really annoying because it's always going to be like this. I can't turn it. But yes, I will quickly show this. Uh, you can put several filters on it and uh, what I want to um, tell you is to put some uh, sharpen and some grain on top and that will make your artwork more uh, detailed and that's it I'm going to save it's basically non-filtered now because I'm using my Vibranto file filter, which is uh, nothing. I'm so sorry for the twisted. Maybe I can edit it in, in post. But yes, this is the final piece. And uh, it's more accentuated than um, it is without the filter. I hope you liked this tutorial and don't forget to download the brush before the 31st of May because after that the brush will be gone and you will be only able to get it from purchasing my um, magical storybook toolbox. But, but, as every month the brush of the month pack is 15% off during the month so you can technically buy the magical storybook toolbox for 15% off as well and um, get lots of these brushes <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this and uh, i hope you will have a lovely month and i will see you with uh, different tutorials uh, during the month mostly for my patrons but um, feel free to check out patreon i have so much tutorials that and um, yes thank you for watching thank you for spending this time with me and goodbye beep i'm back <laughs> because i realized that i want to make you a little extra tutorial for um, how to edit your brush uh, if it's too big for you or too small for you since um Maybe you are not able to use that big of a canvas than I do. So I'm going to show you how to get the best effect if you have a smaller canvas. So let's go for the standard one, which is 3000 by 3000 in Procreate, I would say. Uh, you can use around this 10%. I will make a mark on it, so I will upload it like this. But when you look at the texture, it's a bit different now. So what you can do is um, go to grain and scale the texture down to around 10% maybe. Test, amazing. So you can scale the texture down to 10% and then it will be good uh, it was originally on 19 <laughs> so um this is 3000 by 3000 if we go 2000 by 2000 
which is also I heard people use those who have smaller iPads or do smaller animate or drawings. You almost want to use around 6%. I'm going to mark the 6% as well for you, so you know. And uh, you also want to scale down the grain to around 8%-ish to have the same effect as I did in my big drawing. And as I said, originally it's 19. And uh, one more size that I, that is really common, I want to show you, and that is 4,000 by 4,000. Let's see if I find it. I found it, nice. And obviously that will need bigger than the 3,000 by 3,000. Let's see if this is good. It's good. And uh, the texture should be around, I would say 15. Let's see. Yes, around 15 is good. So yes, that's it. It's just a very quick um, update or addition to what I do. And now you can use it for, uh, for your own uh, illustrations as well. So now you see what I mean. These are the 4,000 one, that for 3,000 one, and the bottom one is for 2,000 one, and I am using it up here for the 7,500 times 6,000 canvas. So I hope this will help, and this is really the end of the video. Bye.